Hi everyone, today we're going to look at how to make a very simple life component using pops. This is something I released a few weeks ago, maybe even a month or so ago, when pops came out in my starter pack, which is available on Patreon. And this is sort of my first pass at making a life component where basically we have particles doing something and then we reset those particles to a initial position. And this works great, but it's a little bit convoluted. And as I've kind of played around with Pops learning the process a little better, I've come up with a much simpler and just as efficient way using Pops, which isn't going to make our brains um, hurt so much as thinking about all these kind of parameters that we have to turn on and off. Obviously, if you still want to access this, um, you can access this with all my starter packages in the Patreon page. Um, there's three tiers, so if you want to access the life, it's going to be part of the patcher tier. I'm going to be making this tutorial from today available for free in terms of something that we can download and use. So this pop life component that we're making today will be available for free via my Patreon as well. You just have to sign up to the free tier. And this tutorial is going to be really fairly quick and easy in comparison to some of the other ones I've been doing recently with Pops. And we love that. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a Pop point generator. And this point generator is basically going to generate a selection of points. I can select if it's a box or if it's a sphere, torus, etc. Any of these geometries, I'm going to stick with a sphere and I'm gonna move this down to 5,000 points. We can change the radius and we can change the seed, but right now I'll just keep this as is. Now, the very basic thing that we want to do is we basically want to create a feedback loop. So I'll put a null here because we'll make some changes before that feedback loop. And put a null at the end of my feedback loop and call it end f b i'll drag that back to the feedback i'm going to create a keyboard in and i'll drag that to my feedback start so whenever i press the key now it's going to reset that feedback right now nothing's happening because i haven't added in any additional components but let's add in a noise and before we actually add it in let's just make some little changes let's turn that down to 0.01 put the period up to 3 and now let's plug that in and see what happens so we can see that whenever i press my one key our noise is starting to move these particles away but basically like we've kind of experienced in top so we have these feedback loops things get away from their original position and very quickly sort of spiral out of control and we lose any semblance of that initial shape. So the life component or the life process that we're going to do is basically going to allow us to bring back these, these positions so we can reset them at a certain point. Now let's just delete that noise for now and we'll add something in later. But let's kind of think about this step by step. When we are working with pops, we have this really handy ability to create attributes. And these attributes are values that we can apply to all of the points. And in this instance, we're going to start out creating an attribute for age. And what I also want to do, because I want my particles to reach the maximum age at sort of different rates, I am going to add in a second operator here, which is the random operator, which I really like. And basically, as we can see, what the random operator is doing is it's giving us this ability to randomly put values in. So in this case, it's changing the values of my P parameter for my um, points. Rather than actually adding, which is the setting it's on right now, which is basically whatever the Let's take a look at that. Um, but basically, whatever the value is, is going to add to those points. So let's just go down. We can see that whatever value 
is generated per point. It's going to be a random value per point between 0 and 1, but that's going to add to our, to our point position. We actually want to create something that's completely new. So we want to put our combine operation to set, and we can make our own output attribute scope. In this case, I'm going to call it age inc. And basically what we're going to do here is we have all of our ages are going to start at zero. So if we take a look at that, I kind of switch between the dat and the pop two for the for the tops or for the chops even uh, because I can get a visual on that and see everything in one go. But we can see here how age is set the same for, for everything. It's just like a constant value for everything. We want basically our age to start at zero and increment by a specific amount until it gets to a threshold and then we're going to reset everything. What I want to do here is have my age inc basically be a random increment between zero and whatever value. So I want a kind of a small value. So I'm going to say 0 0.1. Let's just copy this. Oops. Drag that on there, and let's look at age ink instead of age. What we can see here is we have created all these points, and they're randomly distributed between whatever the low end and the high end of our random scale is. We're just going to keep it at 0 0.1. Obviously, it's up to you how you view these pops. You can use the pop2 viewer as well, which gives you this handy thinning option so you don't see everything all in one go. You also have this thin option in here so you basically don't crash your computer if you're working with really large data sets. I kind of like being able to see visually versus in a table because it just allows me to more quickly kind of view single pieces of information. Perhaps when you're working with larger data sets and want to look at lots of parameters all in one, the table can be more useful. Anyway, we have set our age attribute, which is going to be zero across the board. We have set an increment, which it's going to have. It's basically a value it's going to add to it. And now let's kind of put this into operation. Before we get started with that, let's have a visualizer here. So let's see what our age parameter is. Before we can view that, let's just reset that system by pressing keyboard in. It's going to feed that through now because it's in a feedback loop, so we weren't actually feeding those parameters forward or those attributes forward. So we can see here our age is at zero. Anything we make inside this feedback loop is going to increment every frame. It's basically like this loop that's happening 60 times per second. So what I want to do is add together my, my age and the increment. So basically, we're going to take the age and we're going to add a little bit of that increment value to it every time. So let's see what happens when I do that. So we can see that the age increment just keeps going up and up and up and up, which is great. So we can see that we're actually indexing some kind of incremental age here. And it's hard to see but we have these different values. So we can see that what we can see here is everything is incrementing by the same amount every frame per particle, but obviously the increment value is different, so we have a slight offset here, which is useful. What we now need to do is we need to create some way of resetting that point, and I'm going to use another math mix for that. We can add in another attribute, but right now, I'm just going to set a constant value to do a Boolean check. And this is going to be found in the Combine tab under operation A bigger than B. In this instance, what we want to do is check if A, so whatever age is, is bigger than value B, which is a value that we're going to set. So let's put A, or let's put age in our A scope. And let's put 40 in our B scope. 
right now we can see that it's just going to default to zero because this age parameter is a Boolean. So it's basically going to return either a zero or a one. Age is not meeting that check at this point. So we just get a bunch of zeros. What we want to do here is we actually want to output a different label and we're going to call that reset. Let's view reset as well. As we come up to 40, we can see that we start meeting that condition. And this is what we're going to use to reset those particles to their starting positions. Now is also a nice time to put in some noise so we can actually see that happening. I am going to put it in just after my feedback. So we can see that noise is in operation. Every time I pulse, we're getting the noise and it's just going out and out now. So rather than doing lots of sort of mathematical operations within these pops, I've actually found that there's a really handy way of resetting our position. And this is by using one of my favorite operations, which is mix. So mix allows us to take a scope from A and B and mix between these with a third value. So this value is going to give us something between zero and one. Zero is going to be scope A value, whatever that is. And one is going to be whatever is in scope B. If you put in 0.5, it will be a mix between both of them. So if you're using a kind of mix between various point clouds, this can be a great tool. However, in this case, we just want to switch between the affected particles and the unaffected particles. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag in this null as my second input. And what this allows me to do is basically take the value of each of these particles before they're affected by that noise and add that to my second scope. So for this operation, I'm going to put in P. That's the first set of values which are affected by noise. I'm then going to say in 1P, that's the second set of values. And I'm then going to say reset. And what we can see is this basically is going to have the same effect right now because the points are going to reset, but we're also going to have this effect where basically nothing else will happen after that because the points have reset to this zero, zero, zero position and we're not resetting our life parameter as well. What we can see is that our life or our age has continued to grow essentially. What we want to do is add in a, another operation and it's exactly the same. So we're going to go for mix ABC and we'll do age in one age reset. So what's happening here is when we reach that threshold and I might turn down that threshold because 40 is quite high. Basically, what's going to happen is we're going to reset the age between both. And we can see right now what's happening is rather than having it consistently um, just growing and growing, even once that reset has happened, we're heading back to our zeroth position. So every time we see one of these little pulses, that means we're resetting that age. And so essentially, this is the system. I'm going to go in here to my math mix, which I'm already in. And let's say I'm going to go to five. And we can see that there's this reset happening. And let's also turn down that random, sorry, let's turn down that reset age to something smaller like two. So we can see it resetting more quickly. Super nice. We can see because everything's kind of moving quite fast, we get this pulsing version. So what I'm also going to do is go into here and we can turn down this value by quite a lot as well. So 
So we've got this respawning now, and this is something you can essentially play with. I'm going to drag this into a geo just so we can see it. Let's look at that geo. There we go. And so a few things to even this out a little bit, because it's still kind of, even though we have this reset, it's still quite a lot. I'm going to go into my noise and I'm going to turn down that amplitude. And now we can see a little bit more clearly how things are resetting at certain points, which is really useful. Okay, this is much better. You can even turn up this to a higher value, let's say 20,000 points. So we can see that life happening. There we go. So we have that effect of that life reset. Something else we could do is right now we have this sort of hard coded attribute here. So this is the value that we use when we reset. So we could actually set a reset attribute and we could either have that be a random value. So let's do that because that could basically, that would basically allow us to have each particle will have a different position or a different value where its threshold for resetting will be. So we're going to call this um, thresh. And we're going to say the low value will be one and the high value will be five. So we're going to reset that. I'm going to set this now to thresh. So particles are going to reset at different kind of time periods. So some particles are going to reset at basically a value of one, and some particles are going to reset closer to a value of five, depending on that increment. If I turn this down, We can, we can see how it basically moves the reset to these much smaller increments. So something like 0 and 4 could be interesting, although I'd stick away from 0, I'd have something that's just a bit above, just so you have something that's never going to fall right on the 0, 0 value. Because then that particle would essentially just be static. Let's just see what happens if we just have particles resetting at 0, 0. Every time you make a change, you have to repulse your feedback just so that you can make sure you're seeing that because all of these things that we're changing before our feedback, none of that's actually being applied until we pulse that feedback and set those new attributes because basically those attributes are being stored in the feedback. We can automate our noise to make it a little bit more exciting but this is basically the system for patreon subscribers who are in the patch tier and above i'm also providing this handy pop life component basically you can just drag this into your projects and really easily just plug in different types of systems so you can plug in point files and you have a bunch of control here so you can choose to translate or not translate that 4d so you can control here you can control the amplitude you can control the threshold obviously reset when certain things happen and so the, the threshold is obviously when things reset you can control the age ink as well Let's do something smaller. So this gives you a bunch more control in a sort of a much easier way where you can just drag and drop this into your project files. So if this is useful, sign up to the patcher tier and also that supports me to make more tutorials like this. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon.